Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's an ICO TV FM sweep signal generator model 360. And um, this one is also presented at Radio Museum. And it looks a lot different if you go to Radio Museum. But it's the same switches and features and all that kind of stuff. And you also find schematics, manual, assembly guides and everything like that. They also tell that this one is a unit from 1950. And it contains five tubes. And by the look of uh, the material, it looks a lot like this is a do-it-yourself assembly kit. Or something like that. Because why would you have manuals that explain exactly how to solder different components together and stuff like that. So I, I think this is a kit. And it is very, very special. So the first thing I'm going to do is open this one. And you are going to <laughs> get a very big surprise. I think a lot of stuff happened in this one but first we can just have a little look <laughs> i mean okay transformers that this can't be original right are we mounting two transformers on top of each other like that or is this somebody who just wanted to um repair it and didn't have exactly what they needed it looks like a little bit like the top one here is a uh, home homemade yeah, look at that. This top piece here don't even fit. So that is definitely homemade. How nice. And uh, yeah, there's a tube missing here. This is the rectifier tube, uh, a 6X5. And this is just uh, taken out and then two little diodes put in. So that is a good way to save a lot of power. And then. The rest here seems to be um, quite original. We got a tiny little oscillator tube up here. So this is a 6C4. And then we got the two um, triodes down there. You will see they are 6J5s. And the, this one is super sexy. I really like uh, tubes that looks like this. Super, super old tech. And this one is a 7193. And the fun thing about a tube like that, this one is just a triode. And uh, the anode and the grid, they're up here in the, at the top. Cathode and filament at the bottom. And the rest of the pin in the socket, they're not used at all. So that is, uh, that is the thing with this uh, pretty cool tube. So here is the surprise. Here is what I really came to show you guys. I mean, this one is super, super cool. So there's a loudspeaker, okay? That loudspeaker is driven via a, a potentiometer at the front and this is how much <laughs> how much sweep you want that one here so this is just a uh, a pot meter in series with uh, the filament uh, voltage and then you can crank up ac <laughs> mains frequency on that speaker and that speaker moves obviously a little bit as as you can probably see here, there's a little piece of metal on the speaker. So when this one moves, it goes into this circuit board here. And that circuit board, there's an, a, an inductor that creates an oscillator together with this um, capacitor here. You can fine tune that oscillator. So this is the sweep oscillator. And then when you enable the sweep oscillator and how much you want, then this is mixed together with a fixed oscillator. And that is the fixed oscillator here is controlled by the, um, by the settings for the fixed frequencies. And then there is a big capacitor down there and inductor and all that kind of the usual stuff that creates a nice little oscillator up here, right? 
That is definitely some sort of a surprise. This unit, in, in build quality, it looks a lot less than a, uh, a heat kit. I mean, this has been made to be, I mean, really, really cheap. Just bend this, bend this, bada bing, bada boom, and then, I mean, really, really. Yeah, I actually thought about that. So, why is this so cheap? Of course, this is from 1950. I mean, nobody had any money in 1950, right? But you still had people who wanted to explore radio amateurs, homebrew electronics and such, uh, radio um, modifications and building radios. So this is, of course, what this can do. Uh, it, it covers all the radio bands and TV bands. Oh, this is some kind of dirty stuff here. But it's... I did uh, investigate a little bit around the mains input, the rectifier here, and I mean, everything seems to be sort of safe, safe enough, so I dare to power it up, I guess. Yeah. Also, I wanted to show you um, inside the case. I don't know if you can see this. This is the remains of an exploded capacitor. And, yeah, so somebody exploded a big nasty capacitor and didn't uh, clean up <laughs> the case, but just fixed the, the rest of the unit. And um, you can actually see this capacitor here is not original and there's still nasty, yeah, I thought I saw some, or some nasty stuff there. Ooh, look at that transformer here. That is the... Well, we got the hair. So this is definitely really, really old. Those are called tin whiskers. Those tiny, tiny hairs you see here. And they, they grow really, really long. And they're completely invisible. The thinnest of them you can't really see. What you can see here, there's probably some of the thicker ones. And they reach to stuff and create all sorts of shorts so this is something we need to clean let's do the first power up all together it's more fun that way so i've turned this on added an extra ground chassis protection on the on the unit and uh, now while this one is turned on i will now adjust input voltage and uh, 40 volts and it's using two watts and I can just slowly go up to 100 volts and it's 5 watts. And now I get light in the bulb. I don't know if you can see that. So this is 130 volts and 10 watts. I think I can easily just continue. So let's just go all the way to 220. And it's using 30 watts. And I see light in the tube and all that kind of stuff. And I don't know if you can see that on the scope. Let's have a little look here. What kind of frequency is that? Yeah. Oi, 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 oi. So this is 151 megahertz. And uh, so what is it? We don't have any sweep at the moment, right? So the internal oscillator is here, I guess. Is it responding to this? Somehow. Seems like... It seems like we've got two oscillators running, but the sweep oscillator is not running, right? This is probably how it should say. So now, let's try and crank up this one. Oh yeah, can you hear it? Now, now there's a speaker that moves, right? And this goes like that. I think it's time to go and uh, find a spectrum analyzer and see what happens. So let's uh, try and have a little look here. So I'm doing a uh, 600 megahertz uh, sweep. And uh, now the sweep here is turned off. So what you see here, down here, is the variable oscillator and we also see some mixed products 
that's a little bit interesting. So this is the sweep oscillator and it's harmonics, right? And we see all sorts of mixing. This is quite funny, see? This beats with that one and this one beats with that one and then it, they go like that. And on the other side as well. Huh, how cool is that? So, if we leave it like that, right? And then try and crank up some other sweep. See, now these two goes, of course, the other way. See? Uh -huh. So now we can really... <coughs> yeah. Well... So it's looking like it's working, it will now. It will be on all those different bands creating all sorts of funky stuff. And then you can now detect the the signal here, right? <laughs> well, what exactly is it we can use this for? I don't, still don't really know. But it looks so funny. <laughs> the loudspeaker is really not that loud or annoying or anything. But it's just pretty cool. The last thing we need to to try is the crystal oscillator input. So how about if I put those speeds right there so we don't have anything. And I think there's a... Is it this one? Is this the crystal oscillator input or something like that? Oh, this is just the output drive. How oh, funny. This also affects uh, the harmonics. So if this is down like that, right? I get almost nothing. Oh, this is falling. Falling apart! Nah. I tried with a whole bunch of different crystals and I just can't get any kind of response or any anything. Nothing is uh, happening. So I think the crystal oscillator is just not working. Or I'm doing something wrong but there's also a, another little thing that you should probably do when you have the crystal oscillator up and running the output from the crystal oscillator should it goes out on um, on one of the outputs here and then it's uh, supposed to be connected to the input somehow it says external marker and I think that is the problem it's not really connected to the to the output uh, internally here and I think uh, that is what I saw uh, on the schematic when I was looking a little bit on the schematic I found on uh, Radio Museum. So I think that is just uh, why. So anyway, I think I don't want to play some more, so much more with this. Uh, now I have a little funny thing <laughs> from 1950. So uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a little fun, especially about this little speaker thingy here. Oi, 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 oi. This one can definitely do some sweepity sweep. I thought I was done with the video, but I just couldn't help it. <laughs> I wanted to take out the loudspeaker and have a look at that coil. So this is, of course, the coil, and this this is the um, the capacitor that forms an oscillator, right? And here is the moving part that detunes the inductor. So I just think this is a super beautiful thing to um, to show.